my parents reluctantly took me to the Tivoli because comedians who performed there were sometimes described by my father as blue. I never knew what that quite meant. It was a mysterious epithet when you come to think of it. Was it the colour of their skin, I wondered, or was it what they wore? You turn me on, if I may say so. <laughs> Particularly when you mention forbidden subjects. There's no worry. You know, uh, you... I, I understand for the first time what the term stand-up comedian means, you know? <laughs> In fact, I saw on the stage of the Tivoli Tommy Trinder, who I thought was convulsively funny, though I didn't understand a lot of the things he said. Now, come off your aisles, Bazza. I'm no apparition what's come to haunt you. All I knew was that my mother glared at my father and my father made sort of snorting noises. Which is... which he tended to make when he was trying not to laugh or earn my mother's profound disapproval. I think I know what all you women are staring at, aren't you? <laughs> You're all looking at my penis, aren't you? <laughs> and there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Barry wanted me to take part in an Australiana night. Dear old Sir Les got a bit carried away and, how do I say, his world-famous appendage, which more or less has a life of its own as well, for the first time made a public appearance. I never saw it. Two or three thousand people at the Royal Festival Hall in London saw this beast <laughs> that apparently came out I was just shrieking and running away from him to the other side of the stage going no put it away <laughs> get out of here and um, <laughs> so afterwards I said to Barry you're very very naughty you deserve a big smack that Kylie Minogue should be chased off the stage of the Royal Festival Hall by a sort of phallus brandishing Australian diplomat seemed, in a way, a first. And uh, um, for me, anyway, it was a sort of little taste of the old outrageous days.